Welcome to the Daily DLP. I'm your host, Ash Thompson, and today we're going to go over the Denver Broncos offense and how the Lions can stop it. Let's get... Okay, so I haven't already done this offense before, so we're going to get the whole rundown today instead of just the quick, quick and dirty division opponents version. The Denver Broncos offense is the brainchild of Sean Payton. Payton is, of course, most famous for being the head coach of the New Orleans Saints who won the Super Bowl and also put bounties on opposing players. However, he started his career as a quarterback at Eastern Illinois University. Go Panthers. He went undrafted and ended up with the Chicago Bruisers of the Arena League. The Ottawa Rough Riders, not to be confused with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Those are two different teams of the CFL. Go Rough Riders. And he was a strike breaker for the Chicago Bears. So you can love him or hate him based on your union affiliations. Um, in what would become a delightful piece of trivia due to the rest of his career, uh, Sean Payton's only NFL interception came against the team he would later coach to the Super Bowl, the New Orleans Saints. Uh, he ended his playing career <laughs> with the UK Budweiser National League playing for Leicester. Go Panthers. Uh, finally, he came back to the U.S., hung up his cleats, and got into coaching. Uh, had the industrious title, the illustrious title, of offensive assistant with San Diego State University, Indiana State University, becoming the offensive coordinator at Miami University, not the University of Miami, Miami University. Two very different things. Then he was an offensive assistant at Illinois again. Uh, then he became the running backs coach at San Diego State. And he was Marshall Falk's position coach at San Diego State. And for those of you who are as old as me and watched college football at the time, it was basically like, San Diego State, have they ever had a good player? <laughs> And there was this phenom out of nowhere running over and around everybody. Uh, in 97, he finally made the jump to the NFL as the quarterback's coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. While he was working for the Eagles, he worked under offensive coordinator John Gruden and offensive line coach Bill Callahan underneath more defensively minded head coach Ray Rhodes. But that was only for one year as uh, Gruden and Callahan left for the Raiders in 1998. That's that's when Gruden took that job. Uh, and after the 1998 season, basically Rhodes' entire staff got fired. But under quarterbacks coach Sean Payton, the Eagles threw for 4,009 yards in 1998 with quarterbacks named... Ty Detmer, Bobby Hoying, and the ghost of Rodney Pete. Uh, none of those guys dressed for more than eight games. So basically, with a bad starter and then two bad backups, they still got 4,009 passing yards in the 90s. <laughs> Ridiculous. But Andy Reid, who became the Eagles head coach in 1998, decided not to retain, or in, sorry, after the 98 season, he became the head coach. He decided not to keep Peyton on. Uh, Peyton became the quarterback's coach of the Giants in 1999, uh, then the offensive coordinator in 2000, and they made it to the Super Bowl under head coach Jim Fossil, where they got absolutely destroyed by the Ray Lewis-era Ravens defense and uh, Trent Dilfer, the worst quarterback to ever win the Super Bowl. Not close. Uh, during the 2002 season, Fossil relieved Peyton of his play calling duties mid season, kind of like we saw in the first year of the Dan Campbell era. Guys recover from that usually quite nicely. Um, and basically, he went from there to join Bill Parcells in Dallas as the assistant head coach and quarterbacks coach. So he lost his offensive coordinator job. 
got the assistant head coach and quarterbacks coach gig under basically the coaching position that would change the trajectory of his career at that point. He was apparently, while in Dallas, the only guy who was pushing for the team to sign an undrafted free agent quarterback named Tony Romo. They basically signed Romo to get Peyton to shut up about Romo. By 2004, Sean Payton was basically in the spot where Ben Johnson is in right now, having teams kind of courting him for head coaching gigs every single season and Dallas continuously having to give him more money and clout to keep him. Also like Johnson, he was picky because he stuck with the Cowboys until 2006, getting escalated duties and raises that were preparing him more fully for when he did take that head coaching job. He picked the Saints. Now, the 2005 Saints were the worst team in the league at 3-13 and after playing under some pretty awful circumstances. And this is the kind of team that Ben Johnson should be looking to pick up, is one that has some circumstances going on that are causing them to suck, that do not involve the players <laughs> um, or, or ownership, frankly. Um, in 2005, that's when Hurricane Katrina took out New Orleans. So the Saints basically were a road team for the entire season. And like guys lost houses to that and stuff. Like this this is this was a bad time to be on that team in 2005. So they only won 3 games. And that's the team that that made Peyton basically just decide he was going to to make the jump. He also in that first off season as the Saints head coach bet on Drew Brees surgically repaired shoulder. Uh, unlike the Dolphins who decided to go, uh, they famously went for Dante Culpepper instead, betting that his knee would be healed more effectively than Breeze's shoulder. And frankly, that has shaped the NFL landscape basically ever since. Uh -huh. The Saints made the playoffs in 2006. Sean Payton won, as a rookie head coach, he won the AP's NFL Coach of the Year award. And he remained with the Saints as their head coach until January of 2022. Which is a ridiculously long run as the head coach of a single team. The Saints offenses under Sean Payton were some of the most creative and groundbreaking I've seen over his years with them. Like just in terms of how they combine their running and passing concepts. Ben Johnson owes a lot of what he does and just kind of the way he sees things and puts them together is it's, I don't know if he's actually taking from Sean Payton, but I would bet that Dan Campbell sure is when he's making suggestions. Uh, like the saints were the first team I ever saw utilize pulling guards in their pass protection to help sell their run fakes. Like they do a fake counter and they, Every other team in the NFL would just pass protect, fake like they're going to hand off, until Sean Payton was actually running like counter movements, but then creating a pocket at the end of that. It, it some of the things that a lot of teams do now, a lot of those were the creation of Sean Payton at the NFL level, at least. I'm sure he stole them from some college guy, you know. Talk to me in the comments if, if, if you know the specific offense he stole all of his stuff from. So there's your history lesson on the guy who's pulling the strings with the Denver offense. Like, this is a big game this week. I'm going to do a little bit more about that tomorrow. Don't want to take up this whole thing that way. Uh, that's not what this is supposed to be. It's an offensive preview. So what does this mean for Sunday? Well, last season under head coach uh, Nathaniel Hackett, Russell Wilson threw for 16 touchdown passes on the entire season and took 55 sacks. And the entire NFL zeitgeist has been telling you for basically a year and a half at this point that Russell Wilson's career is over. At least until very recently. They've kind of come around on this a little bit. Uh, they were saying before the season started that Sean Payton might not even take a season to assess what he had that the Broncos' brand new owner might pull the cord, eat an incredible amount of dead cap, and let Peyton begin fresh. Uh, Sean Payton took a very different approach. 
Uh, he did something I have never heard of a head coach doing, and it will earn him no friends among the NFL's coaching community in any way, shape, or form. He ripped Nathaniel Hackett, a new one in the press, for being weak, allowing players to run the team, and essentially just having an organization with no structure that was discernible. Uh, coaches don't do that to each other, basically ever. They'll imply the heck out of it. Like, as they talk about how they're going to be a strong presence in the locker room and they're going to take control of the day-to-day -day details to establish the culture that allowed them to win at their last job. Reliance fans, we've all heard that rhetoric a dozen times at this point. Every coach who takes over says that. What they don't do is say, the last guy sucks and everything he did was wrong. In those words. Uh, Peyton basically did that. Uh, and it turns out Russ ain't done. So far this year, Russ has Wilson has 23 touchdowns and eight interceptions, and his adjusted yard per yards per attempt are better than his actual yards per attempt, which is one of the most important yard markers on whether a quarterback is having a good year. Like he's likely never going to have another 40 touchdown season. He is 35 years old after all. But Peyton took him from the trash heap last year, like just dead in the water and completely done. <laughs> to being the guy piloting a team that's currently tied with two of the three AFC wildcard teams in terms of their record. Uh, and that's with like the Broncos. This, this did not start smoothly at all. Uh, they started with an 0-3 record before they finally beat the Bears in week four. On the way to that, they gave up 70 points to the Dolphins. They also at one point gave up 31 points to the Zach Wilson-led Jets. But, also this season, they beat the Packers, they beat the Chiefs, they beat the Bills, they beat the Browns, they beat the Vikings, and they beat the Chargers. In week three, this looked like an easy W. Uh, but now it looks like the Lions are in for a fight. A really nasty fight. We'll see how this goes. Uh, the Broncos have a decent pair of receivers in Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy. That's not like a world-beating receiver duo, but they're legitimate NFL receivers who will both be starting somewhere for quite a while here. Despite all the trash talking you hear about Judy constantly. He would be our second best wide receiver. Uh, and the offense works Fairly simply, like big picture wise, the specific things they do can sometimes be pretty tricky, but in, they, they can really only do what Russell Wilson can do. They just kind of obfuscate what they're doing a lot of the time. Like their offense pretty much comes down to is Sutton or Judy open? If no, check to the running back. That's the passing game. Is my first read open? No. Okay, I'm going to throw to the running back. That is the Denver Broncos offense in a nutshell. Um, Sutton and Judy have combined for 95 receptions as a pair. Um, the Broncos running backs have 94. I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> On how easy Sean Payton is making the life of Russell Wilson in that regard. It's uh, sometimes he'll have to go through both of them before he gets to the running back, but that's that's basically it. And the dangerous running back out of the backfield is their third down guy, uh, Samaje Perine. He's got 40 receptions and 39 carries on the season. This is their theoretic tipping when he's on the field, it is likely a pass. Just over 80% of Perrine's snaps have been pass plays from the Broncos. So there is key one. They have thrown the ball 378 times. Perrine has been on the field for more than half of those. And Wilson is happy to check down to Payrine because he's productive when he gets the ball. He's at almost 10 yards of reception, and he's been targeted 44 times with four, 40 receptions. He catches the ball, and then he makes plays with it. The Lions have had issues stopping backs like Austin Eckler in that they're having trouble tackling those guys in the open field after they catch the ball. Like, Payrine might get the ball 10 times in this game. Uh, Broncos running backs will definitely get the ball 10 to 15 times. 
key one for the defense is just simply to tackle them when they do. And the key two is stopping Cortland Sutton. Uh, he's their number one receiver. And like with that said, it is not Keenan Allen with 10,000 yards in his career. Uh, Sutton is a really good player, but he's not a Hall of Fame guy. But he is having a good year and does have 10 touchdowns on the season. Like the Lions have been giving up big gains and big games to opposing receivers. Like the, the, the other team's number one receiver has been having a big game against the Lions pretty consistently this year and they need to figure that out they need to understand they don't have any corners who can cover a number one receiver one-on-one -on -one. they just don't like it is not jerry jacobs fault or cam sutton's fault if they lose a one-on-one -on -one battle to sutton and give up a touchdown that is aaron glenn's fault for allowing that battle to even happen Key two is not getting beat for the big play like they did with Allen or Christian Watson or DJ Moore and so on and so on and so on and so on. They have to break this pattern. The things they are doing do not work. Now cover three. Cover two. Cover two. Cover two. <laughs> I'm not just going to sit here saying that over and over again for five minutes. Um, but it is that important that like they need over the top safeties on, on this stuff or they're just going to keep getting beat by it. They need to get Wilson to check down because he essentially operates the opposite way of Jared Goff in that he can't work in the trapezoid, like that short and middle section of the field. He can kind of do the short on the perimeter and he can do deep on the perimeter, but the things in the middle just don't exist. Trapezoid is his dead zone in his passing chart. Deep outside. That's his strength. Don't let him do that. Uh, if the Lions want to beat the Broncos, they, they can't. They just cannot surrender those passes as easily as they have been. So two safeties over the top. Stop the wide receivers. Tackle the running backs when the check down comes. Um, third one's simple. Get bodies in front of Russell, Russell Wilson. He's short. Disrupting his passing lanes is important. He does not operate at all, even remotely well when that happens. Uh, but you also can't just let him run past you while you're doing that, which has been a problem for the Lions throughout this season. Wilson's not the running quarterback he used to be. Like, he's not going to go for a thousand yards or any of the other Justin Fieldsy ridiculousness. Like, that's who he used to be. Um, but he does have over 300 rushing yards on the season. And if the Lions let him, he will convert third downs with his legs like we saw Fields do to them last week. This is something the Lions desperately need to figure out because it is not going away. Like, Dak can do this. Hertz can do this. Love can do this. Geno can do this. Lamar can do this. Tua can do this. Mahomes can do this. Lawrence can do this. Pickett can do this. Allen can do this. Stroud can do this. The teams that the Lions are likely to face in high-difficulty, important games can all do this so if that's the win code the cheat code against the lions is just oh let the guys run past you and then run for a first down on third and 18 the lions are never going to win a big game unless they happen to get you know like the one team that has their backup in <laughs> that that can't be what you're hoping for in terms of your playoff chances Like, going from Dobbs to Nick Mullins might have been the best gift the Vikings could ever possibly have given the Lions because I was not looking forward to watching a really bad quarterback throw for five touchdowns and run for three more over the course of two games against the Lions. Uh, like, Detroit can't just put their head in the sand and hope this goes away because it's never going to. With Wilson, they need to put big guys in front of him taking up space so he can't run and can't see. And I haven't even mentioned stopping the run, which is table stakes for being either Sean Payton offenses or Russell Wilson offenses. If you can't stop the run, Payton will just keep running forever. And he's got three pretty decent backs at doing it. His pairine might only be seeing the field on primarily passing downs, 80%, like I said. Uh, but he is at, I believe it was 4.7 yards per carry on the season. So unlike Theoretic, if you don't stop him, he can run. <laughs> um, 
Like the, but overall, the rushing attack hasn't been great. Like the guy who's doing all of the actual work, not third and 15, is Javante Williams, and he's under four yards per carry on the year after a better season previously. Um, that, that's basically it. Like, like you got to stop the run. That's always have to stop the run. Uh, but you have to tackle the running back when they get check downs because Wilson is going to check down a lot. You cannot let him connect on the deep routes that he's checking down from and you can't just let him run around that's what the Lions have to do here's hoping <laughs> see you tomorrow when I'll go over the Broncos defense which is going to be just as fun as this one was I think <laughs>